What's the word, y'all? Welcome to a series that I've been trying to do for like two years now. It's finally happening. Though it is fun to just talk hoops by myself, I wanted to give other people voices. So what I did is I found 30 prominent fans of 30 NBA organizations. I'm going to bring them on one by one to talk about their favorite team. Because listen, I'm a diehard basketball fan, but I'm not completely locked in to all fan bases. So this is a way for me to learn a little bit more while also talk hoops. And I think it's just right to start off with my Chicago Bulls, right? I mean, there's so much to say after last season, expectations for this season. Why the heck did they not spend the money? I don't really know. But I decided to invite my friend Rusty Buckets onto the show. Oh, no. One last thing. I need a name. I need a name for the series. 30 for 30 is taken if you didn't know. 30 for 30 is such a fire name. It can't be that. So I'm here for, for different ideas. Anyway, let's, let's just talk about the Bulls. I am now joined by uh, Jacob, a.k.a. Rusty Buckets, another Bulls fan. It just felt right to bring you onto the show for the first episode. I don't think you understand how difficult it is to find 30 NBA fans to schedule and have everybody come on. So I appreciate you. You're the first one. So you should feel honored. Luckily, there's no problem with Bulls fans. There's plenty of us everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. Like I, I asked the people in the comment section, like, who do you want to see? It was you. Corzemba. No, actually, I didn't even I don't know if I saw Corzemba's name. I don't know That's how public it is That's that Corzemba is a Bulls fan. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel honored that I was the one that was picked, though, because there's plenty of options at that. Definitely. For that fan base. And I'm sure Connor is going to get OKC because who the fuck Why are you? You're spoiling my it? show. You're spoiling my show. <laughs> but no, definitely. Connor's OKC. I got some prominent names in the community representing teams. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, I'm wearing I'm wearing my only Chicago shirt that I own because I'm the polar opposite of you when it comes to NBA merch. Yeah. I don't yeah. wear any. <laughs> See, that? that's yeah, that's definitely how me and you are different. I decided not to wear because I felt like it would have been too normal for me to wear it. Yeah. But I have the Cavs on later, and I have a Sexland shirt that I have to wear for Obviously. the Cavs. Yeah, I have to wear. Obviously. Let's let's talk about our Bulls, man, because last season, um, a lot of ups and downs, a big roller coaster of emotions between the organization and us fans. Uh, we start off so great, even at the All Star break, we were sitting at like tied for the one seed out east. We fall all the way down to six. We luckily take a game for the Milwaukee Bucks in the first round, but ultimately uh, we fall completely short of the expectations that we brought upon ourselves a couple months into the season, man. Yeah, that was actually painful to hear it recapped. Yeah. Uh, you know when people joke like, ah, oh, my, my basketball team or my team success determines my mental health. Mm -hmm. I could literally feel a direct correlation. When the Bulls were kicking ass, I was like, I could not be happier than I am right now. And then the calendar year turned. Mm -hmm. And after like January 9th, they just went on like a huge losing streak. And I, I remember like, I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I was I, I was so depressed during that stretch of time. Like, and, and, and my theory, because everybody blames it on injuries, which mm -hmm. was a huge factor. But my theory was even when everybody was starting to come back, because eventually everybody but Lonzo was back on the roster. And Lonzo is yep. important, but I don't think Lonzo is the difference between us being a 60-win team and a 40-win team. Mm -hmm. You know, the difference was our identity early on in the season that got lost when everyone got hurt. When they came back, what they were doing as a team, their chemistry and all of that wasn't there when everyone came back from injuries and it just became an accumulation of talent and not a team. Now, there were moments in that Buck series, especially in that, I believe it was game two that they won, mm -hmm. even though we should have won game one. We well. should have. Oh, man. Do you remember? Uh, I, I remember us winning game two and I had flashbacks of us being up 2-0 on the Boston Celtics in the Rondo year, mm -hmm. thinking that, like, we should have been up. Because game one was close. It was a dogfight. It was terrible. But it was so close, and we should have closed and we, it out. And we were making a ton of mistakes. That's yeah. The thing. It was an ugly series in general. We shot, like, 20% from three as a team. You know, it was it was really, really, really bad. Also, I should preface, I try not to do the we thing when mm -hmm. I'm – alone but when i'm with another bulls fan i'm saying we all fucking day you know what i <laughs> I, I can agree with that man because like um uh, some people will, will make the jokes of like oh you can't talk because you're a bulls fan you know when you're having a higher level conversations and i always say i'm not on the team so it doesn't matter yeah but when we're talking like casually like this it's definitely a we it's 100 yeah. percent a we that was my thing and i'm my whole hope is that like even lonzo or no lonzo to open the year like a training camp that's just kind of a repeat of last year Hopefully, like, I don't need the Bulls to be championship contenders, but mm -hmm. if they can be a 50-win second-round competitive team, I'm really happy with that. And to see them be, like, I think they were that level of team to open the year, and then they weren't, that was really sad to me. So I would like to see uh, 
I'm, 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 I really think that was the difference maker. Was the was the the heart of the team died with everybody going down. The the thing about last season is what like I came in with expectations of being a playoff team. You don't trade all those picks plus a young player to get Vooch, and you don't you know give up all of that to get Demar Rose without thinking you're going to be a playoff team. But I thought that was like our going to be our ceiling four to six seed. I, I guess that was true because we fell at number six. But throughout the course of the season, they started to make me believers that something real was happening and we would go onto the pod and I would try to like say like nah you know it's just bad competition you know strength of schedule has been bad and then like there was the one game against the Lakers and Staples or I guess crypto whatever and they ran the Lakers and at this point this is before we knew that the Lakers we were terrible the Lakers were good <laughs> yeah, we were yeah, like yo yeah. we fucked up the exactly. Lakers Lonzo had like seven three pointers I'm like oh we might actually be good and then the change yeah. happened he hit that game winner on the Nets. We made a 40-point comeback on the Celtics before yeah. the Celtics were the Celtics. It was a good half of a season, That 40-point that game, that 40-point comeback on the Celtics is the best Bulls basketball game that I've ever watched. I made a like, whole video of, like, man, the Celtics are in trouble, aren't they? And here they are going to the <laughs> NBA Finals a couple yeah, months later. People made jokes, and I completely agree. Like, the Bulls and Celtics just swapped places. Yeah. Like, the the obviously, the Celtics had a higher ceiling than the Bulls, but, like, the sudden like they sucked to open the year and then were great to close and we were great to open and sucked to, to close the year it was very simple so we had those and the cavaliers had that as well where they started off so great theirs were so heavily injury though ours a little yeah. bit of both and some other stuff they were so injury and then for them the team that took them over was the raptors the raptors went on a big streak on the second mm-hmm. half of the season um but let's let's talk about this off season uh because you know, it was a small one, I guess we can say. They had the middle of exception that they didn't use all of it. I can only tweet the Kevin Durant, Tony Kukoc uh, picture so many times before I start to realize it's not going to happen. So so how do you feel about this offseason? Uh, signing Drummond, signing Drogic, and re-signing Zach Levine. That's like our entire offseason. And Dalen Terry's on the, t- the roster now. Well, I will say, first of all, I was like the entire year like it makes zero sense for zach levine to leave the bulls please Mm -hmm. shut up and i was very vindicated for that to be exactly the case he didn't talk to another nba team i was like you guys spent all this time with this bullshit and i knew he was going to be back and that had nothing to do with me being a fan if i was a fan of another team i knew he was going to be back like there's no way a team commits to zach levine to the degree that the bulls do and then he just doesn't come back. He'd have to be like the biggest asshole on the planet. Um, <laughs> Which I've heard some. I've never personally met Zach, but I've heard some things about him personality-wise. I don't know how true they are. Oh um, no, is it bad things? They they are suspect. But again, oh. there there are like other people's accounts with him. I've never. I can't confirm or deny that they're true. Um, and actually, since they're telling me this, I don't even wanna confirm or deny it because i've been rooting for the guy for five years now now so if he's a jerk it's gonna it's gonna suck i met demar Derozan at las I mean, vegas michael summer jordan league. was a jerk <laughs> but good but point he was michael jordan good point he was michael jordan <laughs> but i met demar Derozan at summer league and he was like the coolest nicest dude of all time so it's like no matter what he's got a fan if i meet zach and he's kind of a jerk i'll still be a fan but it would just be a fan of the basketball player not so much the person either way um off season can I tell you an awkward experience I had at Summer League that kind of relates to that? Of and course. We can get back to that. Uh, I saw AK, mm-hmm. and I tried to get a photo with him. And apparently it was the wrong time to ask because mm-hmm. some guy pulled me aside. I was like, nah, bro, no photos. And, the, and AK just gave me a, a dirty look. I was wow. like, ah. I was on the flight with Fuck. Mark Eversley <laughs> on the way to Summer League. And what he did, he's he got off the flight. He went right down to Vegas, and like an hour later, they tweeted the picture of them in Vegas when Zach Levine signing his official contract. Mm-hmm. I was there. I was there for it. In my mind, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, that that's that's that was like the the not nightmare, but I was like that guy is only if he ever thinks of me, he's just gonna be like uh, that fucking guy trying to take a photo with me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, you. I I, I want to be like, man, why don't you use your fucking mid level exception? Anyway, really, really uh, <laughs> though, that's that's the real conversation we should be having because they they invested so much, right? First round mm-hmm. pick equity, Wendell Carter, um, and, and another pick to the Spurs to get Demar Derozan. They were building this team around Zach Levine and we saw what the ceiling might be you know I I, mm-hmm. I think that organizations and players see things a lot differently than us as fans like me and you can say oh that wasn't sustainable but in their minds absolutely it was so why don't we go balls to the wall and spend all this money to yeah. make the team better I think I think it is one of the biggest front office red flags in the world 
when you're pretty good and your team doesn't use doesn't go into the luxury tax Mm -hmm. because that tells me they a know they're not like that and b are not going to be willing to spend the money to be like that right like i often mid-level exception is not going to be the difference between being a championship team or not but i understand to my understanding that mid-level was like we, we we like skeetered the line of like two million dollars between paying the luxury tax or mm-hmm. not and like if you're that afraid of paying the luxury tax i really worry about the franchise like prioritizing prioritizing money over winning i mean it's it's been a a real thing for the reindors family across basketball across yeah. baseball with yeah. the white Sox. they just don't like spending real, a ton of money real robert sarver-esque decision exactly <laughs> exactly without the recent team success um yeah. this this next season is very interesting to me because like we mentioned there were some red flags about last season that I could see potentially carrying on the biggest one being Lonzo Ball he hasn't played basketball in a very long time and anytime he, uh, anybody's asked about it they just hope that he's ready for training camp and that just feels so very yeah, far they away they cannot give us a clear answer on him at all and and like you mentioned earlier he is such a big connector to what we do. He was he was the guy that can help us in the half court and help us run. Because without him, the offense in the in the full court was about average. But he's one of the best playmaking passers and fast break play in all the basketball. I mean, if you think about what our identity was early season, it was running the floor unselfishly, like throwing full court passes and shit that happened all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Perimeter defense, specifically ones that force a lot of turnovers. Mm-hmm. Like we were one of the highest break teams in the league, partially because our defense caused it. Forcing turnovers, starting breaks, throwing passes. That's like everything that Lonzo does. And then our biggest weakness by far, and something I hoped we would address a lot more than we did this offseason, three-point shooting. Yes. Lonzo Ball is one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA. He didn't play for the second half of the year. And our best shooter after that was who even was that? Okay. Zach Levine. It was Zach I guess. Levine, yeah. But he was also playing injured, so he was the most inconsistent player in the yep. world at that point. Like our three point shooting took a huge hit when he was gone. And I was really hoping we would get some more shooting this offseason. It did not happen. It, it felt like they were gonna be on the phone for a lot of different trades. Um, just with so I many re- people being out there available, it just felt like something bigger was going to happen. I'm not thinking Kevin Durant realistically, but just I adding wanted, another good rotational player. I really, really wanted Duncan Robinson, Joe Harris, or Seth Curry. One that, of those three. I mean, that would help, right? We were the we were dead last in three point attempts on the entire season. Part of that is because our star player is Demar Derozan, and you know Demar Derozan doesn't attempt three pointers unless he absolutely has to to win a basketball game. Um, so we we very much struggled there, and we saw once we got to the playoffs, the Milwaukee Bucks were allowing us to shoot threes and we still weren't doing it they were giving us the three-point shot and nobody felt comfortable enough to take the shots it also so, hurt that Vooch his three ball fell off a cliff. fell off a cliff and I think that's another thing that's on my on my docket here can we see a Vucevic redemption when we traded for him he was coming off a career year um and, and even in the moment I think a lot of people looked at what he was doing of like ah that's that's probably not really who he is because he was having an amazing season when we traded for him he mm-hmm. was shooting amazing from the three. Offensively, yeah, the, he was the, a like, powerhouse. The, the 20 games or so, like 25 games that he played when he was traded to us at the deadline was like, oh, yeah, we're making the playoffs next year just right. because of this guy alone. And then this season comes around, and a lot of the things that I really liked about his game once he got here, whether it's him spacing the floor or him being a trailer when we did run, all fell off a cliff. It, it was games where he would shoot like three of 15, and I'm like, I understand you're a jump shooting big, but Regularly. you're still a big. You know, you're still a big. Let's let's get back to the to like, the core of what you are. He even got worse at finishing at the basket. Like yeah. everything was just not what it was. Maybe I'm just an optimist. He's going to be better. I don't think he's going to be the the uh, all star that he was two years ago. But what we got last year just feels like it can't be worse. But then again, regression is a real thing, and he's also with 32 years old at this point. Um, and he's a center in the NBA, so he could be getting worse. This could be the decline yeah. of his career. But as us as fans, as we try to talk ourselves into the Roger season, well, listen, I, I've, I've had this conversation with people. We cannot guarantee that Franz was going to be our pick. So I'm not even yeah, looking at true. Franz. I'm looking at just the, the people that were there. Franz would have been great. Even Wendell would have been great. But there's the Wendell conversation. Wendell is better than Vuce at this point. Wendell is here, better than Vucevic and a better contract. He's under contract for a good yeah. amount of time on a, a penny of a dollar. But 
you can make the uh, argument that we don't have DeMar DeRozan and Vucevic is not there to help recruit. I know, so I know. That's, it's what like, I, that's, that's how I've been justifying it in my head, but then I look at Wendell and Franz. And you, like, you know what's another man. thing? Who knows if we're able to, to keep Zach Levine around if we don't buy in for him starting right, last season? Man, I get it. You've, you've, you've fully sold me. I got it. Okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> if, if DeMar and Zach are the price, then it was worth it. But It was shit, worth man. it. But, but we have to start thinking even bigger picture than that. Because I think we're still a playoff team this year, even though there are some teams that are getting better. Vucevic was talking contract extensions on Twitter and stuff. Like, he wants to be here. I I, I don't know how we feel about that it as a was, fan base. It was funny when he tweeted after Gobert got traded. Like, I guess I don't have to keep looking at houses in Salt Lake City. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was so ready for Rudy Gobert to be I a was, Bull, by the way. I was maybe the most on the Rudy Gobert train of any Bulls fan because I am a big believer in Rudy Gobert. Same. Uh, so I was like, I was, I, I literally like was talking about it like it was inevitable. <laughs> yeah. And I was sad that it didn't happen, but also I saw the fucking haul that the Timberwolves gave him, And I was like, we were never in that conversation. If that's what was available. Mm -mm. Like we spent this whole time, like arguing, like, are we going to put Patrick Williams in the trade? Which first of all, Dude, yes. But second oh, of all, snap. Here's our first disagreement. But, but second of all, if we weren't going to include Patrick, no fucking chance we were going to get that over the yeah. Timberwolves. Package. Yeah, we don't. We, we I have, can argue. I can argue about Patrick Williams all day. Let's do it. I am still on Pat Island. I'm looking at the 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 entire thing now. I understand the perspective. Like, if we're gonna go do it do it if you want to get rudy gobert to anchor a defense you have to give up Patrick i fully Williams. think like if we had rudy gobert we're a contender i would still question some of the, I think the other be things the best, i think we'd be the best defense in basketball and we have the shot creators to be at least a respectable offense we but respectable doesn't necessarily win championships but number one defense and 15 offense that can at least border it will it will make us have a, a mini parade for making being it out of first round being number one at something is a big deal dude it is no 100 percent, it is but like you also gotta think about the other stuff and and the same problems that we just had in milwaukee offensively would still be the case whether we have rudy gobert or vuce it's actually they might even be fucking worse because it's rudy gobert on the offensive side of the ball screen assist is a real yeah. thing but we still need shooters I mean, rudy around gobert has that that upward gravity and if vucevic isn't even fucking shooting making his True. jump shots to begin with then but let's get back to the Patrick Williams conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think our foreseeable future really lies on his shoulders. DeMar DeRozan, what he did last season, if it, it feels like that's not sustainable. He he went he went to he was all NBA second team. And he was legitimately getting like mm -hmm. other NBA players saying he's the MVP of the league at one point of the season, right? Back to back game winners. Like that was a real thing that I don't oh, think man. is going to be sustainable for next season. Zach Levine, on the other hand, I think we're going to get a better season from him because he should be relatively healthy, and now he's got another year playing alongside DeMar. But our ceiling is really with Patrick Williams because he could be the connector to the connector, mm -hmm. right? Where we see flat, we see flashes of him um, being able to to play roller in the short roll, make the right passes. Flashes, flashes is the exact word. That's exactly what we've. That's the only thing we've got for Patrick. Now I'm giving him a, a slight pass because he played six games before Mitchell Robinson broke his finger or hand or whatever, and then he came back, and then the team was guns blazing, winning hella games, and now he's trying to figure out where he where he holds. I was listening to um to Zach Lowe, and they were having this conversation about him. And his usage rate is one of the lowest in all of basketball off mm -hmm. on the offensive side of the ball. And it yeah. makes sense when you're playing with two ball-dominant guys. Now, I don't think he's going to turn into Kawhi Leonard 2.0, what we talked about when he was drafted in order for us to get excited about him. But oh, I do I believe – what's up? That, I hate that nickname that Stacey King gave him. The Paul? So I hate it. I kind of – I, really I like it. I don't know his middle name, but Patrick, if his middle name is Andreas Williams, it's like P-A-W – and I understand it's going off of the claw, but I like I like it. The man's hands are large as hell too, it's, so it works. It's, it's too based on he was doing that tongue in cheek. It's like when he was calling Thad Young Thad Thad's Johnson. Johnson. I love that, that too. That one, that one is cute. Yeah, because obviously Thad Young is not Magic Johnson. He but was for like about, two weeks. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> but like for a young player to come, like give them like a, like 
fucking Mamba nickname. Mm-hmm. Like, there's not a lot of irony in that. You're just saying that guy is going to be the next Kobe. Like, who is who is Baby Jordan? Why do I feel like Deshaun Stevenson was Baby Jordan? It was somebody obscure like that that didn't pan out to be anybody crazy. Okay, Mayo? I don't know. Either way, b- back to Patrick Williams. Um, I-, I do believe that he's extremely important um, to us becoming to w- whatever it is. And I think my next question to you, and I know you don't probably have the answer to this because if you did, you have a uh, front office job. How do you open the window to become a contender with this current Bulls roster? What can the Bulls do to go from what people believe is just a playoff team to a real-life contender? I mean, I, first of all, I need to know how many of their picks are locked in because of, like, the Stefian rule. Like, what future picks do we even have? I know we but have like, t- 23 Portland, 27 mm-hmm. hours, 28 hours, 29 hours. I could be mistaken there, but I know we gave up two, one of them being Franz. And then the other one is still to be conveyed this year. And then we gave up one to get DeMar. But we also got Damn. one in the Derrick Jones Jr. trade. Yeah, I feel like we're not allowed to trade any first-round picks for like another year or two. It's rough. Yeah, they, 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 they basically put themselves committed to this current core and didn't give them any a lot of wiggle room to make the roster better as far as top-end talent goes. I think the Bulls are setting themselves up for the like good-ass team for sure but like not a contender and not really any way to get there. Hmm. Like the only thing I could hope for as sad as this might be to people is Patrick Williams has like a great third year. And then he's like one of the most highly touted assets. Mm -hmm. And then we can move him for a superstar. Like, and here's my whole Patrick Williams thing. Um, I also love Patrick Williams. In fact, if you go back and look at my original takes about the guy, I think originally like there was a trade proposal that was talked about that was like, uh, cat for Patrick Williams and I was like in no world am I training Patrick for cat. <laughs> which now obviously I would do that yeah um so I've changed my mind on him in that while I believe there's a lot of potential in that guy and part of it is the system I don't know that he has the wiring to really be like a go-to score it doesn't seem like that's necessarily in his DNA mm-hmm I think he's going to be one of the better defenders in the league and like a 16 point guy on good efficiency. And like, that's a damn valuable player to have, Mm -hmm. but am I going to not trade that guy for Rudy Gobert? Fuck no. Right. So you, you sound the what you just described a really good defensive player, 16 points. It sounds like OG on an OB. And yeah. If we can blossom him to become OG Ananobi, I think a lot of Bulls fans well, are can excited. Can you imagine not trading OG for Rudy Gobert, though? Maybe Masai. The Raptors maybe Masai. would do that. I don't the know, Raptors man. The Raptors would have done that. I'm I don't sure know. they would have. They were looking for center play. Yeah. And they there, was a lot of talk about, there was a lot of talk about Rudy Gobert to Raptors. I mean, yeah. maybe I just follow too many Raptors fans. but I think it's, um, it, it's going to be a, a very um, interesting season. I, would you be surprised... If we are lower than the six seed next season, absolutely. And what what, what would be surprising about that? Why, well, why? presuming health is on our side, mm-hmm. and I'm right about the chemistry being fixed in the training camp. If that's the case, yeah. If we open up the year kind of slow and like we're having injury issues, then I would not be surprised at all if you were like the seven seed. But I, I'm I'm also content with the fact that I don't think the Bulls are really going to be a contender for a while. I can live with that. Same, yeah. I, I'm good with just the playoff team because I've been I've I, they have been good for I, I have witnessed one 50 win season in my entire time as a Bulls fan. I wasn't even there for Derrick Rose. Oh, oh. I was there for the season following Derrick Rose tearing his ACL. That's my first year as a Bulls fan. Is that your watching... first year as a a basketball fan, or like did yeah. you swap alliances? Well, 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 I, well, I played basketball, like just played it, but I never watched it. Mm-hmm. Um, I play I've played basketball since I was like six. Like I was addicted to playing basketball, very young, but I didn't really watch it. Um, the guy who got me to watch it was Nate Robinson. That season following Derrick Rose's ACL yeah. tear, Nate Robinson was like a folk hero in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, Hel- helped was, us beat the Brooklyn Nets in the playoff series. That game, that game winner he had yeah. is literally like my favorite basketball memory. Yeah. Too bad his legacy is kind of tarnished a little bit now. Because he got his ass whooped by Jake Paul. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dang. That's what he's going to be known for. That's fucking rough, man. It's definitely he rough. Did, he, was that worth the money for his legacy to be that image of him just 
flat out on the I ground. bet he actually believed that he was going to win, though. He probably did. I think most of them going to that fight be like, oh, it's just it's just a Paul brother. He's a YouTuber. I'm an athlete. Yeah. Those guys know how to fight. Those guys are built. But yeah. 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 They're fucking assholes, but they, they're built. <laughs> they know what they're doing out there, man. Money making machines, too. Okay, so opposite of that i asked would you be surprised if we were the six seed or lower what is your overall expectations for this team this season and you can interpret uh, that any way you want to i don't know it's hard to say the line of expectation because there's so many factors like i kind of I've, I've the the more i do this as a job the more i kind of hate predictions and lists and things like that because mm-hmm. i realize how many variables there are that just makes them obsolete and like just you don't want to get clipped out two years from now with a bad take Nah, well well, I, that, that's every fucking day for me. <laughs> but, like, I I, I kind of hate doing the speculation thing now just because I know there's so many factors that change things. But, uh, like, if I'm going to look at it positively, I'd say 50 wins, like, probably 10 in defense, 10 in offense. And Will probably, they beat any good team this season? That's a big thing is beating the good teams. Because I'm I, sure we can beat up on the bad. That's not a problem. That wasn't a problem. Yeah. Is once we get to the top end talent where the boys fold. But, I mean, we got to 49 wins without ever beating good teams. That's so, like, true. we could still get to 50 without doing it. All you need is one more. Yeah. <laughs> beat, one, we, beat one good team and we're fine. I mean, we, we lost plenty of games to bad teams, too. So, like, yeah. that one Rockets game where Garrison Matthews whooped their ass. Like, Garrison Matthews out. got a full guarantee contract because of the Bulls. Like, yeah. that was that two week span of them winning nine games in a row because of Garrison Matthews turned into Gary Bird, is what they were calling them on yeah. the broadcast. Turned like, turn into Ky- prime Kyle Corver, like 2015 yeah. Hawks Kyle Corver, Garrison Matthews. It'll be something I'll never forget. Anytime yeah. I think about Garrison Matthews, it's going to be like, that let's, week. All we needed was that one. One win instead of Garrison Matthews dropping 40 or whatever the fuck he did. Yeah. It was only like 20 points, but it felt like 40. Yeah. And um, they, at that point, I think they were on like a 10 game losing streak. We started, we jump started their win streak. Like, yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I remember correctly, the Rockets that game hit like 25 threes. That's why I'm thinking of like all the threes. But, anyways, Garrison Matthews tangent aside, <laughs> uh, I think 50 wins is reasonable, assuming that health is within reason as well. And I'm just hoping, like, first round exit if we get an unfavorable matchup, but we put up a fight. Like, if we got the Bucks in round one again, I'm not going to be mad if we lose that series. Yeah. But, like, second round exit, hopefully, again, put up a pretty good fight. Like, I would hope that we match up against a contender, and I don't expect us to win, but, like, don't make it easy for them. Mm-hmm. Like, give them a game or two and, like, really sweat it out. I feel that. I feel that. Well, is there anything you would like to plug as we as we wrap up this episode? What what do you have going on in your your YouTube life or anything outside that? I'm finally trying to get back on top of shit because I've fallen off a cliff in terms of content production. Uh, so I'm trying to get back to like five videos a week on both channels. Um, so I have a main channel where I do more like highly edited shit and like the higher quality stuff, scripted, edited. Uh, I have a deep dive series, which is really high end on that shit. And then my second channel is kind of similar to this one. I just turn on the mic and ramble to the camera mm-hmm. and do it about 70% as effectively as Kenny does. Cause <laughs> I don't have his charisma, but uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's my plug. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know who Rusty Buckets is, all of the links will be in the description to the two YouTube channels to the Twitter account, even though I would probably steer away from this Twitter account. <laughs> Um, but it will be down there in case you're my Twitter, interested. My uh, Twitter account isn't exactly basketball content all the time. It's usually, I guess I won't say that on here. Just You just <laughs> got to click it to find out. If you want to know yeah. what the content is, click it to find out. Content. Um, content. I'm nearly at 40K, so go follow me on Twitter. There you go. I appreciate you coming on, Jacob. Yeah, hell yeah.